This guy got out of prison and brought us his iMac. A customer walked into our shop today, traveling from Pennsylvania to get his iMac repaired. He said that he purchased his iMac over 10 years ago for $2,500. And shortly after purchasing this iMac, he went to prison. And once he got out, he saw our videos online and had to give us a shot. And after talking with him for a few minutes and going over exactly what he wanted, we figured out a solution. He ended up going with a 256 gig solid state drive and 16 gigs of RAM. And he was super excited that finally he's gonna be able to use his iMac after years of not being able to. So now his device has been upgraded and cleaned and he's good to go. This customer caught his iMac on fire. A guy walks in today and said he was using his iMac this past weekend and it randomly started smoking. The device turned off and never turned back on. He took it to his local Apple store and they quoted him $1,499, yes, $1,499 to fix his device. And there aren't too many shops that would work on these new M1 iMacs, but of course we do. And when you open them up, there's really not much inside. And when I took out the board, I immediately noticed why it was smoking. So he decided to get the board replaced and it was half the cost of what Apple quoted. And now he's good to go. Yesterday, we had a customer try to scam us. At about 1 p.m., we had someone trying to place an order over the phone, and he said that he was going to pick up in store. He said that our online store wasn't working for him, so he wanted to pay over the phone and come pick up in a little bit. It sounded a little fishy, so I told him to just come in the store, and we'd take care of him and set his items to the side. Three hours later, a guy comes in and said some guy across the street gave him $20 to come pick up and pay for an order. Obviously, we didn't let that transaction go through, and now we are good to go. So we just got in this 2019 MacBook Pro and you will not believe what's inside. <laughs> Do you see that? This is a roach. Roach. Along with all of his little roach buddies have been crawling around in here. And you think I'm joking, but I have never gotten anything where there's roaches crawling around. Look, there he goes. And the guy sent it in because his keyboard's not working, but obviously it's because there's been hatched a nest. I mean, this thing, they just opened up a roach motel. So this is gonna need a very deep cleaning and hopefully we can get his keyboard working. But once we take some of this stuff up, I'm scared to see what's underneath. So a guy just dropped off his 2013 MacBook Pro and take a look at this. And the backstory is they took it to a repair shop. The repair shop said they found water damage and that there's no hope for it ever turning on. So I take off the back panel and check this out. The battery is not plugged in, so obviously it's not going to turn on. The keyboard is not plugged in, so it's definitely not going to type. And the trackpad is not plugged in, so you can't move the mouse. By the way, if you watched one of our other videos, it does have water damage because it's a little red right there. So this is my first time actually doing this, but I'm going to plug these in real quick, and we're going to see if this works. Battery's plugged in, keyboard's plugged in, trackpad's plugged in. Let's see what happens. And the moment of truth. Boom. There we go. I used to be genuinely shocked when stuff like this came in, but now it's just like I don't trust any other repair shop for my Apple products. Because this Mac is good to go. It just needed to be plugged in. A guy just tried to sell us a stolen device. So as most of you already know, you can go to our website, sell us your Apple product, and we'll give you a shipping label. And when your device gets here and we check everything out, we'll send you an email and send you a payment however you choose. So yesterday, we got a MacBook Pro in that had someone's iCloud attached. So I went ahead and sent the customer an email, but when I turned around, the computer had registered and said that this device was lost or stolen. We gave the customer that sent it in a call, and he literally begged us not to turn him in. And I'm not here to be an investigator, but I did want the original owner to have his MacBook back. But we got everything situated, no one's in trouble, and the original owner is good to go. I woke up this morning to $50,000 in fraudulent orders. This morning, I checked our online store to see what orders were placed and what needed to be taken care of today. And at first glance, I thought we had an amazing night. When selling Apple products, there's a lot of fraud that takes place, so you have to monitor it very closely. And as I started to look into these orders from last night, I realized it was the same guy that placed all the orders. He placed 42 individual orders for the 15-inch MacBook Air. The crazy part about this is that he used the same exact credit card for every order so to say the least it was a crazy morning but we caught it so we're good to go a customer just tried to accuse me of locking his iphone a customer walks in the shop with his iphone 13 pro max and he says to us he forgot his passcode and he's just looking to get his phone reset so we told him that we can reset his iphone for a small fee all of his information would be lost and he would need his icloud information to log back in he came back an hour later and his repair was fully complete so he grabs his phone and immediately starts to enter his iCloud information. And after trying to enter his information three or four times, he looks at me and says it's not going through. And this is pretty usual because sometimes people are just confused and they don't know exactly what to put in. Then he looks at me, says a few choice words, and tries to grab his phone out of my hands. He said that I put an iCloud on the phone to lock it so that he wouldn't be able to get into it. 
I told him that he had to pay for his device if he wanted to take it with him. He tried to tell me that I lied to him and he would be back to get his phone and I also would regret my decision of not giving him his phone back. So I still have his phone, I'm waiting on him to come back and he is currently not good to go. They found this iMac in the dumpster. Today we had a customer come in with a pretty nasty iMac. He said that a local business down the street from him was moving offices. So he decided to go around back and check the dumpsters. And after a few minutes of picking through trash, he ended up finding this huge iMac. So not knowing exactly what it was, he brought it into me and said he's just looking for something so his daughter can get on YouTube. We were able to replace the hard drive with a solid state drive to get it up and working. We even hooked him up with a keyboard and mouse and a power cord. And even though this is an older iMac, it's running pretty good now. But hey, one man's trash is another man's treasure, and this guy is good to go. You guys don't want to be this guy, so let's do a story time. Guy walks into the shop, shows me his phone and iPad. I asked him what happened, and he simply says, my girl caught me. So I immediately dropped my head and just asked him what he means. He said he was messing around, and he knew he shouldn't have been doing it, but he got caught. He said when she found out, she got mad, and that's why the devices look the way they do. Not only did he lose his relationship last week, but he lost his phone and his iPad too. And he said he didn't have his iCloud back up, so now he ain't got nobody's number. But we got him into a new iPad and a new phone, and I'm hoping that my guy learned his lesson so now hopefully he is good to go this might be the worst macbook that i have ever seen it's almost like one of those surface pros or whatever they're called that fold all the way around i mean it is literally held on with tape and also last night's dinner i mean if we can actually take a look this macbook is absolutely disgusting and if you look even closer most people would say this is unrepairable so i'm just going to plug it in and I'm going to see if it turns on. And how do you tell if it's on if your screen doesn't light up? Just hit the caps lock button. In this case, it's on. So in the next few parts, I'm going to fix this computer, clean it up properly, and then give it away to someone who follows. And on top of that, I'm going to add a one year warranty just so you know I'm not sending you junk and that our repairs are legit. So let's see if we can turn this computer from rags to riches. 